transportation is the framework for growing economies in the U.S. Without transportation, you can't grow economies. That was a problem in the heart of Hampton Roads in the first part of the century. The Midtown Tunnel, connecting Norfolk and Portsmouth, had become the most heavily traveled two-lane road east of the Mississippi River. Transportation stagnation at the Elizabeth River was preventing growth in Hampton Roads. To move a new tunnel from pipe dream to plan, and then to finished product, would take the coming together of three companies, multiple state and municipal agencies, several key partners, and some of the finest engineers and construction crews in the world. This is the story of the Elizabeth River Tunnels Project. Back up to the Midtown and the Downtown this afternoon. By 2010, state, regional, and business leaders realized changes had to be made to move more people and more things more efficiently through the Elizabeth River Corridor. When you come to a situation like here, particularly with the Midtown Tunnel, that cycle had outlived its day, and the only way you could move forward was to add new capacity. This project had been considered for years, and it was identified as the number one transportation priority by the regional planning organization. But financing had always been a sticking point. The new Midtown Tunnel would need a new out-of-the-box solution. A public-private partnership and it happens to be Skanska's first PPP project in the U.S. They utilize the expertise, the capital of the private sector, leverage it with the experience and know-how of the public sector. They can deliver more. So Skanska's infrastructure development unit joined with another company, Macquarie Infrastructure, to form the public-private partnership to be called Elizabeth River Crossings, or ERC. ERC would be responsible for securing funding, the design bill, and long-term operations and maintenance of the new assets. The design bill would be led by Skanska as part of a joint venture with partners Keywood and Weeks Marine. The joint venture would be known as SKW Constructors. So what ERC said to SKW in very simple terms is look, we need a new tunnel here. We need to rehabilitate tunnels over there. And we need to build this connector road called the MLK. Now you guys go and figure out the best way to do that. So we had to utilize, and this is the power of Skanska, we utilized our colleagues at Skanska in Oslo who had just completed an immersed tube tunnel there. So we utilized and leveraged their know-how and their strength and their experience. We teamed up with strong partners. Uh, those strong partners had marine experience and some even had immersed tube tunnel experience. That team, coupled with a very experienced engineer, really helped us to come up with a design first that we felt comfortable we could deliver. It's going to have a significant impact to the people uh, and the community here. It just means that businesses are going to flow freer across the tunnel. It means people will get where they need to go, when they need to get there. Time is more efficient for them. In May 2012, SKW begins working with Parsons Brinkerhoff on the design of the new assets. Land and resources are secured. And in the fall of 2012, construction begins. It's all of the site work, supportive excavation, the watering, the, the mass excavation, pile driving. We cast the cut and cover tunnel sections uh, on both the Portsmouth and the Norfolk side. We're standing on top of the bulkhead that separates the area where the first immersed tube tunnel section will be placed and the end of the cast and place cut and cover section on the Portsmouth approach. To my left is the area we refer to as the slot. It's a dredged channel that will accept the first three immersed tube tunnel segments. If you look to my right, you'll see the end frame, and that's the frame that the first immersed tube tunnel section will seal up against. This structure is designed with 120 year design life. So the concrete, the rebar, everything we're forming here is designed for 120 year life. Further to my right, you can see the uh, 
walls formed and uh, the two walls that we're pouring today as part of the cut and cover approach. As with all of our jobs, uh, obviously safety is a priority for us and a prime concern. We hold ourselves accountable to high standards and making sure that everyone goes home every day the same way they came to work. One of our main areas of focus is housekeeping. And you'll see as you look out on the slab here that we have people continuously cleaning up um, as our operations start and operations are completed. As this work continues at the project site in Portsmouth and Norfolk, the actual tube sections, also called elements, need to be fabricated at the same time. The project will require 11 tube sections, each more than a football field in length and weighing 16,000 tons. The logistics involved in casting, transporting, and placing these tunnel elements would require careful consideration. To cast the tube sections for this tunnel, we needed a facility capable of doing what we needed. So we obviously looked at a lot of options for building those tubes. The best alternative was a graving dock. If we had a facility that we could build in and then flood that dock and float them out, that's the optimum solution. And there was only one facility really on the entire east coast that was available that would fit our needs. And that was the old Sparrows Point shipyard up at Bethlehem Steel, just outside of Baltimore, Maryland. So we were able to secure that property with a lease arrangement for the period we need. I and mean, it was a good facility for what we needed. It was the most economical solution for the project. The dry dock in Sparrows Point is large enough to cast up to six elements at a time. So the element fabrication process will be split into two batches, elements one through six, and then elements seven through 11, and fabricated as follows. First we pour the bottom half, then we pour the center wall, and then we pour the doghouse. To ensure a 120 year design life for the new tunnel, the fabrication of the elements requires the development of a high performance concrete mix and the highest construction standards. Tunnels use a 6,000 PSI mix. It also has a lot of rebar in it. There's a lot of steel in the design. So between the high strength mix and all the waterproofing things that we go through, it'll definitely last a long time. Back in Hampton Roads, work begins on the channel at the bottom of the Elizabeth River, where the tunnel elements will be placed. It's actually gotten to dig a trench from the Norfolk side to the Portsmouth side. And what we're doing right now is we're digging the main sections here. The tunnel elements will be placed in this prepared and screeded trench, with fill dirt and armor stone to be placed around and on top of it to protect it. As the new tunnel takes shape, the old tunnels are getting facelifts, beginning with the downtown tunnel. The big win at the downtown tunnel is the rehabilitation. These existing tunnels will get new lighting and a new ventilation system, which will open and expand the area within the tubes by removing the existing suspended ceiling. It will provide a more efficient way to move air through the tunnels. What we've put in is what we call longitudinal ventilation several advantages. You don't have the huge vent buildings, you don't have that huge maintenance costs. There are individual fans in the tunnel spaced out. These fans are highly efficient from an electrical standpoint of power consumption, but they also give you other benefits. You can change the speed. If you have a problem, you can take a fan down, replace it very quickly, where if the vent building goes down, it may be a substantial amount of time to repair and get it up. So it really depends on the tunnel type, but we have a much more sophisticated system that I believe will perform much better and also use less energy. This same ventilation system will be part of the existing Midtown Tunnel Rehabilitation and will be installed in the new Midtown Tunnel. In June 2014, the first six tunnel elements are built and ready to be transported from Baltimore to Portsmouth, a massive logistical undertaking. So there was a very uh, detailed calculations made in the design of the elements so that they would float Over 12 hours, the dry dock is flooded. The tunnel elements, engineered for this moment, float up with the rising water. We installed four ballast tanks in each corner. We would then install water in those tanks to then trim it out to allow us to float level. The gate that separates the dry dock from the open water is removed, opening the tunnel elements up to the Patapsco River. Then, 
waiting for the perfect moment. Once we head over there at 2200 to start these element moves, we'd like to have these elements out, done, and over with at about a six and a half to seven hour time period. And that doesn't give us much time. But just if it is, one big boat, one of the 3,000 horse or bigger, is going to hook up to one end. He's going to be ready to tow it out. There's going to be a small boat that goes in between them. He's going to get around the back and he's going to help guide it out. Once it gets towed out of the dock, there'll be a line handling crew on each element as you come. I'm going to go over a list of what, our, what the goals are for the line handling. So what we did is we had a target low tide that we were uh, going after. And that target low tide, we would start towing the elements out. Probably in. We use a target low tide because uh, that way we want the tide rising so we never have any issues with hanging up in any shoals that may be out there. We also used a nighttime tide because the uh, nighttime tides during this part of the year are slightly higher. All right, let's start pulling it in. All right, let's go. All right, it's all yours. That process was a very hour by hour schedule of what the tugs need to be where. Uh, throughout the night to be able to tow all six of these elements out through that high tide. Just past sunup, the last element is moved out of the graving dock and ready to head south. We did a lot of outfitting work to the outside of the tubes to basically make them into barges uh, to be able to float down uh, the Chesapeake Bay to Portsmouth. The past three days have been quite amazing, watching uh, your, all your hard work disappear before your very eyes and uh, see this empty uh, dock you have behind us. It wouldn't stay empty for long. Before the end of that week, work begins on Tunnel Elements 7 through 11. As elements one through six make their way to Portsmouth via tugboats, pulling these segments down the bay, you think of what they are. They're 30 feet tall, 60 feet wide, 350 feet long. It's a football field, and they don't tow very well with a blunt end. And if you don't have enough of the tunnel out of the water or freeboard, we call it, the tube will actually go underwater. So to be able to tow it at three, four miles an hour, we had to have about two and a half or three foot of freeboard. So we carefully had to track the weight of what we're pouring, were the walls thicker than they should have been. We had a guy that did nothing but calculate every pound that went into it, but it's a calculation. So you never know what its weight really is until you float it. The engineering calculations proved spot on, and all six elements made the two-day journey down the bay and arrived safely in Portsmouth. Next step, preparing the elements for placement in the trench at the bottom of the Elizabeth River, a process called immersion. This involves concrete, lots of concrete. It is added inside each tunnel element to the bottom and in the form of blocks on top of the elements. This extra weight will allow the elements to overcome buoyancy and settle in the trench at the bottom of the channel. Additional hardware is added to help with positioning and to ensure each element locks into place and seals properly. The first three elements require a special immersion technique. They were up in a narrow slot, we call it, and it takes about three tube lengths, about a thousand feet, till we get out into the real river. So we actually put in a supportive excavation system along the sides of that slot to protect the port property and the existing tunnel. So we had to lay those first three tunnels, do the dredging, uh, do the bottom preparation, immerse them all in a narrow slot. In October 2014, the first element moves into position in the slot. We actually did it with cranes and we actually held that section with cranes, added the ballast, and set the first one by crane setting. But element one would prove a challenge. It wasn't the perfect placement that the engineers had planned. We have to prepare a gravel bottom to seat our tunnels on, and at least it's three foot of gravel. 
and the specification for that gravel is plus or minus the tenth of a foot, which is about an inch, plus or minus. So we graded it underwater, and you're surveying it with a sonar device and hand devices to check it, and we met the tolerance. And we brought our first tube in, but we realized it didn't sit right. And the reason it didn't is the middle was about an inch high. We had an outfall. It's a 60 inch storm drain that drains the parking lot and dumps in the river. And that, where that was dumping was right over the, the center of tube one. And that, uh, what it did is it created a, a mound of material in there. So after looking at it a little bit, we realized that the plus or minus one inch was an okay tolerance if it was distributed appropriately. But you can't just say plus or minus an inch. So we revised our internal specification and tightened it up. And what we said is we're going to get to an accuracy of plus or minus a half an inch, and then also look at the distribution of that across the bed. Like everything, it's always, the first one's always the hardest and a lot of new learning curve to go through. But uh, we've got a good, good team and a lot of uh, talented, skilled, skilled guys that have been able to accomplish a good foundation for the tunnel. Element one is now in place and the Elizabeth River Tunnels project team is thrilled to be moving forward. There's a lot of coordination, a lot of communications, you know, there are a lot of moving parts to this project, so, um, you know, one, one person or one team couldn't manage, manage it by themselves, so I think there's a joint effort, you know, everybody's worked together hard to, to, to bring it successfully forward. The new half-inch gravel tolerance spec proves a success. Moving forward with ensuing tunnel elements flows seamlessly. Elements two and three are immersed in the slot in late 2014. We're blessed on this project. We had some of the best toys in construction. Uh, we have some of the best people in construction. Feels great, feels great. During the early months of 2015, tunnel elements four, five, and six are placed beyond the slot in the channel dug at the bottom of the Elizabeth River, which requires coordination with the Coast Guard to minimize the impact on commercial and military traffic on the river. It also requires a new system for immersing the elements in the deeper channel. It involves the use of the lay barge, a catamaran type vessel built specifically for this task. The lay barge will be used to move elements four through 11 into position and to place them in the trench at the bottom of the river. Four was our first one on the lay barge. Uh, then we went to five, which we got a better idea and we changed a few things, made it better. It's like every tunnel is a different animal, so we've got something different every single time. But uh, we are making it easier, safer for everyone here involved with, with doing this. And it's making us smarter too. But the real challenge of working here is being precise in the preparation of the channel and the placement of the tunnel elements in nearly 100 feet of water and we survey the relativity between the GPS antennas and our hard points, our hard work, working points are the four corners of the element. So we know the relationship between those working points and the GPS and the inertial navigation system to give us the real-time position of those four points, X, Y, and Z, so three-dimensionally. And typically, we're trying to get everything within the size of a golf ball. Some people have made the analogy that we're building a Swiss watch 95 feet underwater. You know, a lot of things we do have to be very, very accurate, very calculated, and very orchestrated. But probably one of the most critical is mating the tubes together underwater at that depth, and we want a good seal. We actually laser scan the ends of both tunnels, bring them together, and close them in a virtual computer reality, and we look at that fit. And if we need, we adjust the fit a little bit so that we get that good seal once they go on the bottom of the river. So as elements one through six are being put in place in the Elizabeth River, elements seven through 11 are being fabricated in Baltimore. And in March, 2015, they are completed and floated out, bound for Portsmouth. Back in Hampton Roads, work continues as the MLK Expressway connector begins to take shape. The one mile elevated highway, which will serve as a direct connector between the downtown and the midtown tunnels, will solve a huge traffic issue for local residents. You had to get off of the Western Freeway 164 and then wind your way through the local city streets of, of Portsmouth to eventually get back on 264 and uh, get to the downtown tunnel. The new cut through will save time and frustration and remove port traffic from city streets. 
in about the same amount of time that it took me to just talk through that, you're, you're at the downtown tunnel. Meanwhile, the pace of construction at the new Midtown continues rapidly. The last five elements are put in place with some special consideration for the final piece of the new roadway. Tube number 11, our last tube, we couldn't float into position once tube 10 was placed. So we brought 11 in and kind of parked it uphill a little farther than it belonged, brought 10 in behind it, immersed it, and then brought 11 back to 10 to make sure we had a quality connection. Now, with all elements in place, the new tunnel would need to be fully outfitted before welcoming its first public vehicle. So we started on one end, the Portsmouth end, and began to cut out the bulkheads between the sections that were temporary. Once they were removed, we put a joint in, another second seal in each joint, and further encased that in concrete. But then we had to do all the interior outfitting. Outfitting includes all the electrical and mechanical devices. Uh, they have a lot of devices in there for safety and support, including lights and ventilation and monitors of all sorts. Paving even had to be done, asphalt paving for the roadway. So all that work was done in place on the bottom of the river when the tunnel was, after it was placed in, on the bottom. Additionally, a massive floodgate is installed. It's 24 feet tall, 34 feet wide, and weighs 37,000 pounds. It is designed to be lowered at a moment's notice to protect the tunnel from storm surge and high tides associated with hurricanes and nor'easters. On June 17, 2016, five years after the project was given the green light and six months early, the new Midtown Tunnel opens to the public. We're actually quite proud of that because when we got our job, we had a five-year schedule and we sit down and we crunched it a little bit to make a four and a half year schedule. And here we are four and a half years later, we've met that schedule. We set a very aggressive goal for ourselves to open the tunnel early and we've met it and it just uh, it feels great. I think we can say without a doubt that this is one of the highest quality projects that's been built in the state of Virginia. It is quite a milestone and it's a culmination of a lot of work and this is a great day and a good day for a celebration. The new tunnel not only makes getting between Norfolk and Portsmouth easier, it makes it safer too. Our new tunnel is very state-of-the-art from a safety standpoint. The most obvious is the new tunnel is no longer two lanes of opposing traffic, eliminating the possibility of a head-on collision. The new tunnel is more spacious, there's a little bit more room, the shoulders are wider, the ceiling is higher, so you automatically just get a more spacious feel and a more comfortable feel. Brighter LED lighting is not only more energy efficient, but also adds safety to the commute. And they're adjustable and we can change the amount of light in the tunnel for the conditions outside, also for the transition outside for safety so your eyes can adjust. The tunnel is also built with an escape corridor. So as you drive through the tunnel, uh, in the direction you're going, it would be on your right side, you'll notice big green circles where there are doors, and there's doors about every 300 feet, and behind those doors is a corridor. So if anything happened in the tunnel, a flood or fire or wreck or accident, uh, anything that you needed to leave the tunnel for, you wouldn't have to worry about walking up the roadway. You go behind those doors, they're positively pressurized, so when you open them, air blows out, smoke can't get in, and within 300 foot, there's a safe haven within 300 foot of every spot in the tunnel. And you can take your time and egress through that safety corridor, and it brings you out into the tunnel support building and up to land. The tunnel is equipped with smart sensors and cameras to always keep commuters safe. There's cameras that can detect incidents, uh, changes in the traffic speed, stop, temperature sensors, haze detectors for air quality, there's carbon dioxide monitors, uh, or carbon monoxide monitors, and all that's tied into a very sophisticated system uh, that's run through the control room. And in case of fire, a state-of-the-art sprinkler deluge system will go into action. And a deluge system is essentially a sprinkler system like you would think about in a building, but it puts out a huge volume of water. So if a fire occurred in a tunnel, that's one of our main concerns being a tunnel, uh, there is a deluge system that would help control that fire to help could arrive or even extinguish that fire and certainly could prevent the fire from jumping from vehicle to vehicle. Rehabilitation work in the existing tunnels is completed ahead of schedule as well. The downtown tunnel work was completed in August 2016 
four months ahead of schedule, while the existing Midtown Tunnel rehab finishes in May 2017, almost a full year ahead of schedule. With the tunnels fully functional, the next piece of the project to go online is the MLK Expressway extension. And in November 2016, that road opens up a new and easier way to get from the Midtown Tunnel to the Downtown Tunnel. The new roadway is also a major boon for port traffic. So all the truck traffic that used to be on High Street, Frederick Boulevard, Turnpike Road, all that's going to be obsolete in the city now. Everybody will be able to use the uh, interchange up here and get right back and forth to 264. So with more traffic and less congestion, SKW and its partners know they have left behind more than just a new roadway. One thing that I'm really proud of on this project is the leadership has taken the uh, community under the wings. They really want to make an impact. And when we leave here, we still want this uh, community to know that we had a, a positive relationship with them. We reached out to a lot of local charities just trying to do what we can to help the community out. On top of the charitable organizations that we've helped out, we've also done some uh, educational outreach. Uh, we've had uh, several organizations come to the project trying to help motivate the future generations to potentially be the next engineers, next workforce in Virginia. And SKW's approach to leaving things better than they found them has had a positive impact on the environment. Efforts include doing in situ treatment of lead contaminated soil on site and removing thousands of tons of contaminated soil during the dredging process, as well as chemically treated piles. SKW also utilized waste concrete to build oysterbergs, which were donated to local community groups to rebuild the shorelines. The result is improved water quality. We actually left the river cleaner than we found it. We took out a lot of contaminated materials and disposed of them properly, a lot of creosoted piles. So we've actually improved the river quality. SKW was honored with more than 19 design and engineering awards for their work in environmental stewardship, engineering, and construction management. We developed a lot of great people on the Midtown Tunnel project here. We're developing people, and they feel so rewarded because they're working on an amazing project. SKW launched a workforce development program to ensure a new generation of construction workers will be ready for future projects here in Hampton Roads and all throughout the country. They also exceeded all disadvantaged business enterprise and small women and minority-owned company construction subcontract goals in delivering this project. In my 35 years of construction, this is the best job I've ever been on, and it's the best group of people. And everyone that we've put on this job has been eight plus and uh, has made this job enjoyable to work on. The people that worked on this project, I just want them to remember this project as the best job that they ever worked on. And I think there are, are many people that will. Well, for me personally, this is a dream job. If I had to pick a job to, to work on, I couldn't have picked a better job to work on than this. Probably a once in a lifetime project, definitely, definitely unique, but a lot of, a lot of challenges too, which makes it uh, fun and, and rewarding. For the public, we just want them to be wowed when they drive in here. I just want them to say, wow, you know, this is so much better than the existing tunnels that we have. It's important to, to note that Skanska couldn't have done this project by ourselves. We had the help of great partners, Kiwit and Weeks Marine. We had um, our concessionaire partners, Skanska Infrastructure Development and Macquarie, uh, and a client, VDOT, who was really truly committed to get this project done. I think ERC is, as the owner, as the customer on this project, you know, some of the areas where we can identify satisfaction in the relationship and in the delivery of the project are a project of this magnitude being delivered ahead of schedule and within budget. Um, and I think a lot of that can be attributed to the leadership on the project working together towards that one common goal. It's giving people back their time. You know, the biggest effect from this project is that on average, uh, commuters are saving between 30 and 60 minutes a day. That's a big deal. It's important to society. This job will change the lives of lots of people. We have a lot of training programs. We do a lot of education for our employees. We contribute heavily to the community and charities. The job itself will improve the quality of life for people. Less time in traffic, less wasted fuel, less wasted emissions. 
shorter commute time, help develop commerce and support the traffic for the ports. With our company, we like to build things that matter, things that build a better society, that aid people. We want to do projects with a purpose. Those exhaust fans were really nice today. It was pretty spacious and it's a whole different view when you're running it versus driving it. It was a pretty cool experience, but uh, you know, some of the tunnels around here are a lot smaller and older and it's kind of cool going through a new tunnel. It's a great improvement and it's going to help, I think, traffic-wise, uh, the congestion that comes down Hampton Boulevard. It was nice and clean and bright. The air moving through is great. It would make the commute, I know, a lot easier on everyone. And we also like the new signs. It's, everything's clearly labeled so you won't get lost and confused, which is much better than the downtown tunnel, so if that's a plus for you. So to finally have something clean and new and say there is a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak, then it's really good.